So last week we covered the basics of writing your visual novel through the creation and management of a chapter file. Pretty cool, right? So today I'm making use of that and I'm recreating a scene from a visual novel called Sakura Fantasy by Winged Cloud. I chose this visual novel because its sprites and assets were freely available for download thanks to the wonderful community of the Spriter's Resource. So that being the case, I've got all the characters, backgrounds, and cinematics, and thanks to YouTube and A Powersoft, I've also got all the music and most of the sound effects as well. The only thing I don't have are the UI elements, but that's okay because I have my own. Now, don't worry though, I've already recreated the scene by the time uh, we'll actually get to that point here. There's no way on earth I'm actually going to make you guys sit through watching that, but there are some things in the video you might want to watch, such as the addition of a few small features to our own VN system. This is the scene that I will showcase using our own system in Unity. Now, based off this scene alone, there are a few additions I want to make to our novel controller and character class before I get started. One thing is being able to flip a character to face left or right at my command. Flipping a character is as easy as it sounds. All we do is toggle the X scale of the character's rec transform from positive to negative and vice versa, and our character flips with no issues. Which means we need access to the rec transform component of the character to be able to make this change. From our character episode, we already cached that component as the root of the character. So now by making these three functions, we can actually flip our character super easily. But of course, whenever I make a command for my novel controller, I have to update the command files so I don't forget about them, or forget the syntax on how they, I actually use them. Then add the commands to your novel controller so you can call them from the actual chapter file. The good thing about just going ahead and writing a chapter file is you'll find what works and what doesn't, or at least what's inconvenient. For me, I decided my set expression method was just too long-winded, so instead I did away with it and replaced it with two different methods called set face and set body. Believe it or not, it helped speed along the writing process a lot. So doing that, I shortened what I had to write. Granted, there's still the autofill, which is a VN writer's godsend, but it also shortened it because I no longer have to define what region is affected. The region itself is in the name of the action. So that left me with these two new functions. Another thing I did was change the default speeds for character movement and image transitions, so I almost never provide a speed value, and that sped up writing a good bit too. Then I changed my if statements in the handle action function to a switch, using cases instead of those nested if statements. And of course, all my newly added functions were put into the handle actions case. After that, I also noticed I was constantly moving my characters on the x-axis, but never on the y, so I just decided to make the y-axis optional. Lastly, I wanted two more features for my characters. I want characters to enter a scene to become visible, as well as exit a scene by fading out. That way, characters can come and go like you always see in visual novels. This won't use the character's alpha channel, but instead they'll transition to images using only alpha. A fully transparent image, in other words. So to fade out into that texture and fade back in, I decided to cache the last used sprites of the body and face of my character. Then in fade out, I load the alpha image as a sprite from my directory and transition both the body and the face to that image, caching their current sprites first. I give it speed and smooth parameters so I can optionally pass them in if I choose to do so. To bring a character into the scene using fading, I first check that the cache sprites are not null. If they aren't, then we revert to those sprites using the transition system. After that, back in my novel controller, I created a command for exit that took one or more characters separated by a semicolon and caused them to fade out using two optional parameters for speed and smoothing. Likewise, I made the command for entering a character into the scene. This took the same parameters using one or more characters and forcing them into the scene with a fading effect. If the character is not enabled on start if it's first introduced into the scene, so if the retrieve character is not enabled, then it's a new character which hasn't cached its current sprites. If that's the case, then I set the alpha of its current sprites to zero and make it transition naturally by transitioning to its current sprites. Otherwise, we fade into the cached sprites. 
And since we're transitioning to active sprites now, we should discard the return command if we're trying to transition to one of those, within the character class, on both the transition body and transition expression. Guys following along okay? These are all ideas that made things easier for me, and I thought of them as I was writing this episode out. Now, I got two more suggestions for you, and these are pretty decent ones, so let's plow through them real quick. The first one is narrator talk. When a narrator is speaking in the visual novel, most of the time, the panel where the speaker name is becomes disabled, and it's only enabled when an actual character talks. So, you can set up a game object reference in the dialogue system for the speaker name, uh, well, the speaker name container at least, and enable it only when a character is speaking, and not the narrator. The last one is a little more subtle. Take this visual novel for example. In particular, watch the transitions between expressions. Notice how smooth they are, and even when the body changes pose, we never really see through it. That's due in part to the different speeds between the images fading out and the ones fading in. The images fading in do so at a speed about twice what the ones fading out use. But that's just for characters, and layers also use this function, so we don't want to double speed as a constant. Instead, I'll add an optional boolean here for fading in faster that'll only be passed in as true when a character accesses this function. Then the actual speed is multiplied by 2 if that boolean is true, used to control the transition that way. Which means the last thing we need to do is come into the transitioning body and expression coroutines and the character and make sure that that boolean is checked to true when we call for our transitions. Alright, now that all that's out of the way, I've got my chapter file complete right here. We've got dialogue, event, music, sound effects, layer changes, the whole shebang. I have both my recreation and the original version side by side, so here we go. Here's what we can do so far.
So there you have it, guys. That's what's possible for you. As is, you've got the ability to make a working visual novel right now if you wanted to, but we're going to keep going and add even more capabilities to this. Until then, I wish you all a happy day.